Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Jay Hobson, presented by Bank Corp South. Good homecoming win for the Golden Eagles last Saturday night. They knock off the Roadrunners of UTSA by a score of 27 to 17. And uh, Hop, just give us your thoughts on, on that ball game as you sat back and, and watched that one kind of uh, develop on Saturday night. What sort of stood out? Well, I felt like we really moved the ball well offensively in the first half. I felt like defensively uh, the entire game, uh, I thought they played hard. We had a few missed assignments there that caused us. But, you know, we came out, we drove the ball our first possession, uh, got down deep in their own territory, about the two or three yard line, kicked the field goal, and then got another long possession uh, and got another field goal. So we're up 6-0. and. Uh, we're playing really good defensively and offensively, but we want to cross that line. And uh, at the end, uh, UTSA made a big play. And uh, defensively, we have to be assignment sound, but our defense kind of bowed their neck and, and stopped them. So it's a 6-3 game, and I really felt like the second quarter, uh, our offense really played well. We, we, we moved the ball. I thought we ran the ball well Saturday, which is always a plus, and we threw the ball well in the second quarter. And, we took a big lead into the half, and in the second half, UTSA kind of controlled the field on us. You know, give their punter a lot of credit. Uh, you know, our punt return team, we got to do a little bit better job of maybe catching those Sunday hops and, and, and doing a better job of um, kind of limiting the field position uh, battle. We got stuck in, on the two and the three yard line a couple times on our possessions. and. And uh, we had a few turnovers in the second half that uh, really cost us. So those are things we got to clean up. I just thought our effort was good. I thought our players played hard. Uh, that was something I'm always proud of. It was a great team win. Uh, uh, we showed those flashes of that football team that I know we can we can be. And and um, you know midway through the third quarter, I was really excited the way we were playing. Now we got to finish that that late third and fourth quarter off. I know you, you went into the game wanting to kind of establish the run a little bit more, and, yeah. and you did that with a couple of young guys in Travinsky, Mosley, and Steven Anderson. Yes, yeah, they did a great job, Travinsky and Steven, and I felt like our offensive line did a great job. Uh, we, we blocked well, uh, we did some things well, and we have to continue that and get better. I, I always say that's our journey. We want to be better this week than we were last week, and I, I think that's the great thing is we are a football team that I think is just going to get better and better and better. And, uh, you know, that, there's a lot of potential. Uh, again, we stopped ourselves on some drives that, uh, again, we just hold on to the football, play assignment football. That's what we have to do. You mentioned uh, UTSA special teams, but Eagles did a pretty good job there. You got a few field goals there from Parker Seanfield. Yeah. Zach Everett did a good job. And DeMichael Harris finally got loose well, on a 79-yard you know, return. To be honest with you, our kickoff return was huge. That was, a, that was an explosive, dynamic, uh, difference maker play. Uh, I felt like offensively and defensively we did a lot of good things. The kicking game, uh, especially in the punt game, uh, we certainly needed to be better in our return game. We had opportunities, but we kept kind of losing field position with our punt return unit. And that's something that we're working on this week where we got to make, you know, we got to keep guys off our returners and we got to make good decisions. And some of those decisions are tough, you know. Because a couple of those balls, you know, it, it's tough because Quez is back there and it's, it's that roller. We don't want him to step up there and make that feel that ball with a guy on him if he's unsure. I'd rather him get out of the way and let it roll. But if, like we talked about on the sideline, if we do have that Sunday hop, maybe we can grab it there at the 15 or 20 yard line and give their punter and give their punt team a lot of credit. They had some, some questionable rollers that uh, went down to the one yard line and they kept us backed up in the second half. Oh, and defensively for the Golden Eagles, you hold them to well under 200 yards in the ball game and get six quarterback sacks. That's something you've been trying to do, get to that quarterback more. Yeah, we did. We, we got to the quarterback. I thought we pressured the quarterback really well. Um, I thought in the back end, it's always a give and take. I thought we covered well, too. And when you cover well, that all, always helps helps your defensive line. It's always a team team effort. But, you know, you saw guys like Jack, Jock and Paxton and Ruff and, you know, everybody, Ladarius, those guys were really getting after it up front. DeMario, I thought, played a really good game up front, was physical. So it was good to see those guys flying around. Funny you should mention Sherrod Ruff. He's our feature this week. The guy who's a, uh, got an extra year, got hurt last year after, I think, four games and came back and uh, is really a leader on this team and, and playing some really he, good he's football. He's playing real good football. Uh, Sherrod is, you know, we always tell players the tape doesn't lie, you know, and uh, it, it's not about – 
what's in an article. It's what's on that tape that, that's what's going to be relevant. And you know, there are a lot of teams calling about Sherrod now because he's putting some good things on, on tape. And those are things that uh, Sherrod's playing hard. He's an active, quick player. He's a fun guy to coach. He, he likes the physicality of football. He, um, you know, he plays hard, and uh, he's just he's just a fun guy to be around. He's a football player. He enjoys he enjoys the physical side of the game. All right, Coach Hop's going to join us back back on the show in just a little bit. We'll talk about what's coming up for the Golden Eagles this week. It's a trip to Charlotte, North Carolina, Richardson Stadium to take on the Charlotte 49ers. So enjoy our features, and Coach will join us back in just a couple of minutes. Carly Della Sala and welcome to Southern Miss Sports Today. With us today, we have a crucial part of our game day atmosphere. Today we will visit with the Dixie Darlings. Today we have Peyton Stubbs, Sabrina Trosclair, and Tracy Smith, the director of the Dixie Darlings. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of the Dixie Darlings today? Yes, the Dixie Darlings started in 1954. Dr. Raymond Manoni had seen the Kilgore Rangerettes perform at their community college and decided he wanted something like that at the University of Southern Mississippi. So he recruited one of their dancers to come here, Joyce Sametka. She was actually the first Dixie Darling on record and they created a team of 16. It quickly grew to 32 and now here we are today, 64 years later. Wow, that's amazing. So can you tell me a little bit about how you got involved with the Dixie Darlings? Well, of course, I grew up literally coming to Southern Miss games, tailgating, always being in the game day atmosphere, and grew up watching the Dixie Darlings. And so I always wanted to be one. And I was lucky enough in the 80s when I came to USM, I was selected as a Dixie Darling. And then I was an active alumni and once I graduated, and then was, again, fortunate enough to be um, interviewed and receive the director position in 2003. Sabrina, tell me a little bit about why you chose Southern Mississippi. Um, well, I come from a very Southern Miss based family. My mom went here, my sister went here, so we come to games all the time when I was a kid and I would always see the Dixie Darlings and so um, the Dixie Darlings are very much um, the reason that I chose Southern Miss because I just saw those girls out there and I just saw the, how bad I wanted to be one of them. So um, the, the Dixie Darlings definitely influenced my decision to come to Southern Mississippi. So you are a student as well. How much time goes into being a Dixie Darling on top of being a student as well? Um, well, the Dixie Dons is very much um, a time commitment. We practice every single day for like an hour and a half to two or three hours. Um, so every day we have practice and then you have games. Um, we have workouts on top of that. So balancing school can be a little difficult at times, but it's very much worth it in the end on game day whenever you're on the field and then you just see the crowd cheering for you. So Peyton, tell us a little bit about how you got to Southern Miss. Well, both my parents attended Southern Miss, so um, I had a big influence coming up. Um, and then also I decided to be a Dixie Darling and I saw them on the field and I was just like, I really want to be a part of that community. And so here I am at Southern Miss. What is your favorite tradition that you have at Southern Miss? Um, game day wise, I think it would have to be Eagle Walk. I enjoy seeing the fans. I enjoy seeing my friends, my family, sitting there waving. Just seeing everybody in the atmosphere is just a great experience. I love Eagle Walk. How do you feel like that you are an ambassador to Southern Miss? Um, I would say that we, especially on game days, we always have little girls that are always coming up to us, whether it's tailgate, eagle walk, whatever it is. And so we just have to, we're kind of a role models to those little girls. They want to be us at some point in their lives. And so I would just say that you want to be a positive role model to little girls and other people that are even here in college, you know, that want to be a part of this organization. So before we close, Tracy, can you tell us a little bit about how to get involved with the Dixie Darlings? Of course. Um, one, I would encourage anyone who wants to be a part of this organization to keep up your dance skills, perform as much as you can before you ever come to Southern Miss. And then we also offer clinics each January and February before our auditions are held in March and April. So get in touch with me. You can take one of your senior days, come watch practice, come be with us. You can interact with the ladies, um, work with some of them, and, um, and then just, uh, again, keep up your skills and, and come audition and be a part of our wonderful group. Well, thank you so much today for the Dixie Darlings for being here and Tracy. And look out for them at the football game this Saturday. Southern Miz to, to the top. top.
my journey was long. Um, I left Cordial, Georgia, went to Dream College in Kansas, Coffeyville, Kansas, where I spent, well, two years there, but uh, one year I went home, I got sick or whatever, so I took a year off my first year there, and I came back 2014, did that one season. Got a couple offers and everything. Um, so um, I was recruited by Coach John Williams. He was the tight ends coach here, I think. He was the tight ends coach here, and Coach Bunkin also. I was one of the late um, guys assigned here. I signed um, during the summer. Um, came in fall camp. My first day was like here was fall camp, and it was kind of it was just, it was rough, man. It was tough, but um, I was just um, intrigued by you know my best friend Devontae. Like I said last year, Devontae Foster was one of the guys that I've never took a visit here at all. Never took a visit. I never even heard of University of Southern Miss to be honest with you. But he just he just like told me everything about the nasty bunch. He just told me what the coaches bought into and everything. So that's one of the things that made me want to come here. So growing up, football was my first you know, sport I ever played, but um, I kind of got into wrestling a lot, and I started wrestling uh, really a lot. So um, wrestling came a big love for me. I started getting real good at it, started practicing a lot at it, and it kind of it kind of overtook football sometimes, you know? It was kind of funny, because I, I never thought anything just like overtake football for me and my love, but um, wrestling was one of the sports where you know, it just took a lot of time out of you, man. It just, it just, it just made you like want to be, you know, even better at it. Cause I don't know, it's just like being an individual in a sport like that. You know, just wrestling, you just you can have so many achievements, you know. But football kind of came in when I started um, um, learning how to like do my double legs and stuff. So I started learning how to play football even better. I started learning the human body more, how to tackle people, how to get people down to the ground, and all that. So football came in a little late after that. I will tell you one thing, wrestling is a hard sport, man. Just the preparation for wrestling. It's not even like the matches. It's like the preparation for wrestling. You know, being in those gyms when it's hot, you're trying to cut weight and all this stuff, and then you come over to football, and you're in the hot sun and everything in the summer times and everything. So wrestling and football kind of came hand in hand and everything with me, and all the techniques I learned in wrestling, I took over to football. So wrestling helped like a lot. My mom grew up with both, being both roles in my family, my mom and my dad, man, I'm really a single parent. And you know what she been through, she went through breast cancer, she beat breast cancer and all that, and that's the blessing that everything happens still here with me today. Um, but she was the biggest influence, man. She got me into football, she didn't want to sign me up for football, she didn't want to dare every day for practice and everything, she didn't want to work hard to make sure I had everything I need for football, and she was just the biggest influence I ever had. Yeah, I got hurt the fourth game of the season against North Texas last year, and um, it was it was it hurt me bad, man. It kind of kind of messed with my head a little bit, man. But you know, it was a blessing, man. It was a blessing to, to see you know to sit down and see the team, you know, finish the season out. And I, I just watched from the sideline, you know, it's just everything unfold, man. You can see how from practice to preparation, how the game's going. I learned more. I watched film more, man. I just rehabbed a lot, got my wrist back better. Came at this year even stronger. Being a leader, man, vocal leader was something hard for me, you know. I mean, I, I talk, but I don't really talk a lot when I'm on the field, man. But on the field, I was just set by example, man. Just knock somebody in the mouth and be over with. But um, this year, man, I, I've learned that we have a lot of young guys on the team. We have a lot of young guys, so I have to try to be vocal, man. I try to help those guys out, man, because if you're quiet, man, you know, you won't get nowhere in defense, you know, on the offense either. So I just try to be vocal some more this year and just try to lead those guys. So last December I finished with my criminal justice degree and right now I'm just taking a couple hours right now towards another bachelor's right now. But um, after school, I, I just want to do something with criminal justice. I'm, I'm not sure what it is, whether it be FBI, DEA, or just some type of law enforcement things, but I want to do something like that just to help people, man, help people out in my life. I just, I feel like that's what I'm, I'm put on earth here to do is help people, so that's what I want to do. Been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right, thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. You got me falling hard, sweet baby, you got me falling hard for you. And still, I felt this way before, you know it's true. And still, you got me more and more, oh, you got me falling hard.
Yeah, I wound up here at Southern Miss um, at the end of August, kind of a, a last minute uh, hire, as you could say. Um, I spent the past two, two years at Barry University Division II um, institution in Miami, where we won two national championships and uh, helped the team finish 58-0 and in two seasons. And I was ready to take on the, the challenge of being a Division I head coach, and the opportunity here was, was tremendous. I grew up in Zanesville, Ohio, a small town, and I uh, attended Florida Gulf Coast University where I played college tennis. Um, at the time it was Division II, now they're Division I. Um, graduated in 2006, and just because I loved the game of tennis, and I always wanted to, to be involved in, in the lives of young student athletes to make an impact, I decided to, to get into college coaching, and I was lucky enough to, to start my coaching career in the fall of 2006 at Wofford College as the assistant men's and women's tennis coach. And, um, ever, ever since then, um, gained valuable experience, Division I assistant coach and uh, Division II head coach and um, thir 13 years of, of great experiences and a lot of ups and, and just a few downs. So far the team, um, they, they work extremely hard. That was one of the first things that I noticed. Um, they work extremely hard and they want the leadership, the, the positive uh, guidance. and. Coming off of uh, two tournaments, most recently last week, um, the ITA regionals, we, we played some very good opponents and uh, very happy with, with how they competed and um, you know how, how they want to get better and not really focused on the result right now, but worrying about the result more so in the springtime during our championship season. So some of the players on the, on the team that highlight the roster are two seniors, um, both international, uh, one named uh, Ricky Pereira and TJ uh, Jerse from uh, Slovenia, two seniors that have been with the program for four years now that um, have really established a, a good hardworking culture and, and uh, they'll definitely be in the starting lineup this coming season. So they're, they're fun to watch, very entertaining and, and very high level of tennis. So Conference USA is one of the, the top conferences in the country, I would say. Uh, two teams that have really dominated in the past, the past five years, have been Rice University and Florida International University, um, along with you know, uh, North Texas and Old Dominion, Middle Tennessee. Those are the top five teams year in and year out. And uh, traditionally, Rice has dominated. FIU has come along the past couple of years, and uh, both are ranked top 40 in the country in Division I. Uh, NCAA so the competition is, is very very good and I know that um, we'll have to, to, to play our best tennis against some of the top teams. So in preparation for this season we, we practice all year round we go at it very hard um, we have very good practices that make the practices difficult um, to prepare for all the matches in the spring so that way when the springtime comes around and we're competing uh, the competition is fun and, and it's more or less fairly easy uh, compared to the practices and it's my job to, to push them so when January comes around uh, for our first match, um, first few matches that we host in January we'll be ready to go and just much excitement. So for the spring we will feature um, seven to eight home matches starting in January. The schedule is actually being uh, finalized right now as we speak and uh, the, the first match on our schedule is January 17th. Um, and uh, we're very excited to open up on that day. So hopefully the fans can come out and, and support um, the, the tennis team and, and you know, bring family and, and friends to, to the wonderful tennis center that we have here. Today we are here with Jack Duggan, the Assistant Athletic Director of Communications. So Jack, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to Southern Miss. Well, I um, grew up in Jackson, in fact my mom's family is from Hattiesburg, um, so I had a, uh, uh, had a big family presence here growing up and uh, in fact uh, saw a bunch of games uh, here at The Rock when I was a youngster. Uh, and. Uh, my, my aunt, my Aunt Margaret, who was a longtime professor here at the university, um, 
it was her dream for me to come here. And uh, so uh, I, I helped that dream come true. So I, I enrolled in fall of 1985 and uh, I was able to get two degrees from here, one in accounting and one a master's in uh, sports administration and the uh, best decision I've ever made. And how did you get into sports information? Well, I, I played baseball here. Uh, I played for Hill Denson for a couple years um, and uh, I was a walk-on. Uh, so, you know, we didn't, get any, we didn't get any athletic scholarship walk-ons. and So I walked on for a couple of years and uh, Hill Denson uh, after my second year, you'd have end of the year meetings. He, he brought me in. He said, Jack, we love having you in the program. Um, you know, we want to keep you around and we're going to offer you a scholarship. And I, you know, I said, coach, I mean, you know, that's what I've been working for for two years. And he, he looks at me and he says, there's only one catch. And I said, well, coach, um, what's that catch? And he says, you're going to have to stop playing baseball. So. <laughs> So I tell everyone when I tell that story that I'm the only college athlete to ever get a scholarship to stop playing the sport <laughs> that he played. So, uh, but that started my sports information career. That led to to me, I guess, the first year being um, uh, the the statistician for baseball because uh, at that time they didn't have a dedicated person from mm -hmm. sports information. So I just sort of weaseled my way in from there. I got to know the sports information director, Regal Napier, very well. And he was nice enough to give me more and more responsibilities um, uh, to help out. And then uh, when I received my undergraduate degree, they offered me a graduate assistantship. Well, he never technically offered me the graduate assistant spot. He just told me that he had one <laughs> and that I could apply for it if I, if I wanted to, which was Regal's way of saying, yeah, if you wanted to come on, we'd love to have you. And so, uh, so I did, and uh, I spent two more years here uh, as, a, as a GA. And, uh, my last two years, um, we went to the NCAA tournament, and um, those were the first two times that uh, Southern Miss had been in the baseball tournament. So, and then I moved on, uh, I guess, for about 15 years before I came back to the university. Can you tell me about one or two memorable moments that you have here at Southern Miss? One or two memorable moments. Um, I guess one was one in the uh, 2011 uh, Conference USA Championship football game in Houston. Uh, that was that was a pretty special day. Um, you don't get many of those uh, very often, and uh, that was that was uh, that was really nice. Uh, the other one probably would be um, my first visit to Rosenblatt Stadium, uh, getting a chance to do that. I'd always told myself that I would never go uh, to Omaha until we had a team there and uh, fortunately we went in 2009 and I was able to make that trip so that was a lot of fun as well. And lastly a lot of people want to know do you allow grilling in your press box? <laughs> no, no I do not. Uh, yeah no we do not we do not allow grilling of any of any shape or size in the press box so uh, you know you just have to you just have to be adamant about that and not allow that to happen. The Golden Eagles now get ready to take on the Charlotte 49ers. We'll talk about them in just a minute, Hop, but uh, it was homecoming, and I know we talked about that some last week, but the, one of the guys who was here, Adelius Thomas, who was inducted into the school's Alumni Hall of Fame, a guy who's done a lot for Southern Miss football, very successful in the NFL, very successful businessman now, and uh, a great uh, asset to Southern Miss. There's no doubt about it. The AD's one of the all-time greats, not only in – College football or pro football, uh, certainly in Southern Miss history. Uh, I don't know if I've seen many in my lifetime that uh, could rush the quarterback like number 97 could. Uh, he, he was a, a joy to watch on tape. He was uh, a very intimidating football player. You talk about quick twitch now. That, he was a tackle's nightmare. But uh, again, a, an honor well deserved, and uh, he's one of those guys that uh, helped build this tradition here at Southern Miss. I know he used to tell me, and he said he used to tell Coach Bauer he wanted to play some tight end. They used him well, he, some he at probably tight could end. Play tailback. I mean, he they just was fast now. He but he told him guy. he used to tell Coach Bauer. He said, "I he said I'm a great tight end." He said, "I can catch him blindfold in a sandstorm. Blindfolded in a sandstorm is what he used to say." Well, I'm not questioning uh -huh. that. Just uh -huh. watching him come off the ball on the defensive side, uh, the athletic. 
athleticism was definitely there. I, and I know you probably saw, again, you guys are hard at work getting ready for a game, but I know you ran in probably to some guys. It's always neat to see some of those former players come back, it particularly is. at home. Coming. It is. It, it's, 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 a, it's a special thing. And, uh, again, saw a few guys in the end zone walking out on the field. That's always – that's always a great thing, and just know they're always welcome. Love to have them back. All right, the Charlotte 49ers are your opponent this week. And, uh, again, as we've talked about so much, doesn't matter who it is each weekend, it's going to be a tough opponent. Charlotte's that way. But it looks like it's a Charlotte program that's gotten really, really better from a year ago. It's Conference USA play, John. Here I, here I go. It's a good, really good football team. Uh, we know uh, any time you're in, in conference, it's always it's always a, a battle, and Charlotte's uh, no exception. I mean, they're a football team that play hard, well-coached football team, and uh, we have to bring our A game. All right, well, congratulations on the win last Saturday against UTSA. Let's Thank go get another one this weekend. Appreciate it, Coach. All right, the Charlotte 49ers host the Golden Eagles on Saturday afternoon over at Richardson Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. As Coach Hobson says, always tough to go on the road in Conference USA, so a tough one coming up for the Golden Eagles on Saturday. Don't forget Monday we're at Georgia Blue for the Golden Eagle Hotline. Come on by, visit with us, sit around with us, and we'll talk a little Golden Eagle football. That'll do it. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time. Another inside look into Golden Eagle football. I am more than just your local pharmacist. We eat at the same restaurants and we give back to our community. At Rogers Family Pharmacy, we are dedicated to keeping you and your family happy and healthy. Download the Health Mart app to your mobile device and easily enter your refills, pill reminders, and so much more. Rogers Family Pharmacy, where we treat you like family. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. The Rogers Family Pharmacy. Hey, Southern Miss fans, it's Toby Barker, mayor of Hattiesburg. Mickey Spagnola once wrote, if you're going to war and you get to choose first, choose Southern Mississippi. Always choose Southern Mississippi. Don't fight Southern Mississippi because no matter how hard you fight, those folks will fight harder. His words capture the character of our institution and our city. We here in Hattiesburg are writing a new story, one where we rise to our challenges with great excitement, one where we push our city to reach its potential, and most importantly, one where there's real partnership between the University of Southern Mississippi and the city of Hattiesburg. Southern Miss is vital to our city's success. From the quality of life it provides through athletics and the arts, to the talent it cultivates in the classroom, we share a common destiny. Hattiesburg is proud to be Mississippi's college city, and we hope as we go forward, you'll join us in supporting our Golden Eagles this season as they go to the top.